Hey guys, it's Archie Luxury. Archie Luxury from the Archie Luxury channel, the Paul Pluter channel, and Archie Luxury corporate. Guys, keep watching, keep watching. I need the viewers. I need the viewers, I need the subs, I need it. Like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Tell your friends, whether you like them or hate them. Just tell them anyhow. Archie Luxury on YouTube. Hey guys, Archie Luxury on the Archie Luxury Paul Pluto channel doing a paid review. Paid review 20 SE36. Wist, wist, wist watch check. I'm wearing a JJ Lacoutre, Jager Lacoutre Reverso Grand Date. And let's jump in here. This is for Aaron. Dear Archie, my name is Aaron. I'm 35 years old, living in Denver, Colorado, USA. I'm a huge fan of the channel and find your reviews to be most honest, helpful, and entertaining reviews. I especially love your insight on Thailand and Asian women as I visited Asia for my 30th birthday and like so many better men before me, fell victim to everything Asia has to offer. If possible, I would love to spend at least one year living in Bangkok once COVID is over. I know you have some experience with this and consider you the pontiff of Nana as well, uh, of Nana as well. So I would love to know your thoughts and best advice for a young man looking to live in Thailand for a year. <clears throat> I would also love for you to review my current three piece collection as I find myself content, uh, content for the first time ever in my watch collecting, as I find myself content for the first time ever in my watch collecting journey, as I've always been someone to sell and flip my watches pretty quickly. Although I'm currently content, I'm still uh, eventually like to add two more pieces to solidify and bring the collection together. I'm not a wealthy man, so these are very big purchases for me that I need to plan for. My current collection, here we go. Rolex, Rolex Sea Dweller 4000, that's the SD4K. 40 mil reference double one double six double zero. This is the special sea dweller that was only made for a short time when the diving range went ceramic and then they replaced it with the deep sea. Then they replaced, then they brought out the sea dweller 43 mil. I like this watch because it wasn't the Submariner. Next piece, Omega Speedmaster Professional Halcylite. This has become the watch I wear the most. I got the adjustable clasp, added on, and it's a game changer. We added a picture for you to show what can be done. And then finally, Breitling Super Ocean Heritage 2 42mm. I bought this watch because I love the classic style. Brands I like and have considered adding a JLC, IWC, Panerai, Tudor, or another Rolex. I already have two divers and a chronograph, so my only requirement is that it's not another diver or chronograph. I also like the idea of one watch, one brand, but I would add another Rolex, like an Oyster Perpetual Blue Dial, as I think that would be a great all-rounder and could fit well in the collection. Thank you for your advice and help getting so many of us through these days during hard times. I've sent you 65 bucks via PayPal for the review and advice. Best regards, Aaron. Aaron, well, thank you, Aaron. And I got to tell you, Aaron, what a beautiful collection. Three-piece combo meal deal. I got to tell you, Aaron, I got to tell you, the happiest time when I've had, I mean, I've had collection. I had one piece. I was a one piece for a long time. And then I've had, you know, like, I've had 10 plus pieces and I've got to be totally honest with you. Totally honest with you. Um, uh, I got to tell you, man, I got to tell you, I think your collection pops. Absolutely pops. The happiest I was being was when I had three pieces and I had a paddock, the 5107. I had a Explorer one and I had a Datejust. So that's when I was kind of happiest. Now, now with your collection here, three pieces. What have we got? We got the the ceramic sea dweller. We got the Speedmaster, which is an iconic watch, and we've got a Breitling. So I got to be totally honest with you. Um, th 
thank you very much for the content and comments there. I got to tell you seriously, man, what you need to add, this is what I would be doing. I was going to say to you, man, I was going to say add a Tudor Black Bay. Tudor Pepsi Black Bay. That's right. That's the Tudor GMT. And guess what happened? Guess, guess, guess what happened? You already did it. You came back to me yesterday and said sorry for multiple emails just got the tudor gmt to add to the collection wanted to include the picture for so there's four pieces now we got a speedy speedmaster we've got the sea dweller we've got the tudor and we've got the brightling the brightling super ocean heritage 2 and I got to tell you, what a beautiful collection. Looking at this picture, even though you've used a flash, don't use a flash when you take photos. It still looks like a beautiful, beautiful collection. It is gorgeous. I got to tell you, Aaron, this collection pops. I really do like it. I like it a lot. So, man, I think you have done all the good things. What I like about this collection is you've got a very, every man needs a Rolex unless you have Paddock. That's the only exemption I'll give you. So you've got the Sea Dweller 4000. That's become a highly sought after collectible watch. That's a beautiful Rolex base. Then on top of that there, you have got, you have got a Amiga Speedmaster man on the moon the man on the moon. I mean, that's the house of light the manual wind. It's iconic It's a fabulous it punches way above its weight. It's a it's a it's it's a game changer I love that watch and then you've got the Breitling heritage Two super ocean heritage Two, which I've owned a few and I've got a soft spot for them. I love the heritage Two. it reminds me of the, the the early submariners without the crown guards like the 5508 you know no crown guards and i really do i really do like them i like them a lot so you know when i read this here i'm thinking what do i need to add well what i would be adding you'd have to add some sort of gmt function and you've done it by getting a tudor the tudor pepsi gmt that's a fan Fantastic watch to have there. Absolutely fantastic. Um, <clears throat> okay, so basically now I think you should have a bit of contentment. That's a beautiful four-piece combo meal deal. That is a that's a great collection. You've got two divers, a GMT, and a you've also got a speedy as your chronograph. So you've got all your good bases covered. What would I add to this collection? Now, that's a very good thing because we always want to add something. I'd probably say, you know, I would be saying, why not add, you know, some sort of reverso? I think a reverso would be a great watch. Just the ultimate sort of dress watch. It's a, it's a beautiful piece to have there. I would definitely consider adding that. So you've already, hey, hey, man, like minds, think alike. You've already said you like JLC. IWC, i got to be honest with you there. IWC, I would be very careful. IWC seems to be a very softish brand. They have some great watches. But, you know, the Portuguese chronograph is lovely. The Ingenuers, they're kind of, I loved my Ingenua, but, I don't know if I'd recommend one to you. I'd, I'd be looking for more icons. The Portuguese was where I'd go. Pam, look, if you're going to get a Panerai, get the iconic Pams. You don't want GMT Pams. You don't want, you know, chronograph Pams. What you want to get in a Pam is the basics. The Pam 111, Pam 112, the base logo type Pams. Just simple. That's what, you, that's what I would be saying. Tudor, you've already done the Tudor thing. You've done... A great job on that uh, and also I would certainly add more Rolex I definitely would add another Rolex I think um, Oyster Perpetual Explorer 1 
No date sub. Well, maybe not the no date sub because you've got enough divers. Explorer 1, Milgaus, Air King. I think something from Rolex would be good. The thing about Rolex is you're going to have your money. It's going to be safe. You're going to pay a lot more for the Rolex, but you're going to be able to get out if necessary. So i got to be honest with you, Aaron. I would say slow down a bit. Slow down, slow down. Because the biggest problem is I find too many people, they try to achieve too much stuff too fast, and then they got to sell it off. And they end up selling the good stuff. So if I were you, slow down. You're only 35. Just slow down, slow down. Um, wow, you want to go and live in Thailand? Look, i got to tell you there, Thailand is a lovely place. Unfortunately, it looks like that may not be so easy. It looks like that may not be so easy. Um, look, i got to tell you, Thailand is a fantastic place to visit. Um, for yourself there, you said you would like to, you would like to live there for a year. If possible, I'd love to spend at least one year living in Thailand once COVID's over. I got to be honest with you, COVID is really, really, if I was 35, I would be, um, you know, I think the way to do Thailand would be low cost, low cost, low cost. Um, I, I want to be honest with you, most people I know who go there and work, if you're going to get a job easily, look, look, I'd, I'd be looking at doing my own thing as opposed to working for somebody else. A lot of people became English teachers there. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'd want to do that. I don't think I'd want to do that. I would be more inclined. I would be more inclined. Um, look, my advice to you: you want to you want to go to Thailand, you want to live there for a year. I'd be trying to do some sort of. Look, I got to be honest with you: it's a terrible time now. Okay, it's terrible. I think 30, you may, <clears throat> that option may not be available to you. Okay. Um, I got to be totally honest with you. That option may not be available. Thailand is a wonderful place. It's a wonderful place to have fun. It's fantasy land. But unfortunately, it's becoming so, it was, before COVID, it was getting horrendously expensive and, it had really changed from when I was there in the early 2000s. So, my advice to you, my advice to you would be, if you're going to go, you want to stay in Thailand, I would probably look at some self-employment opportunities. It's very tough. It's very hard. It's very, very difficult. At the moment, um, I don't know if that's such a great idea. I'm sorry to say this to you honestly. I think Thailand has been really hurt by this COVID. Thailand's a country that really does depend on tourism. And they've done so many things to stuff it up. So I got to be totally honest with you, man. I would say to you, it's very sad to say, but I think you may not, that opportunity may not be there for you. Okay. I'd possibly be looking at Japan. That's where I'd be looking at. You've got to wait for this COVID thing to solve. And, and it's, it's very difficult. I'm sorry to say this to you. I, I'd like to encourage you, but to be honest with you there, um, yeah, I think the best thing you can do is, if you don't have debt, try and do it as a backpacker. That's what I would be trying. To, low cost. Low cost is how I do it. Unfortunately, it's all a disaster now. It is all a massive disaster. Um, I can't see how you can do this cheaply and easily. It's become a disaster. So, at this stage, 
um, what would I do? I would possibly be looking at maybe getting a Thai or Asian girlfriend. That might be the girlfriend experience in your own country. That might be the best way to do that. And, and you know, there are a number of ways you can actually do that. You could, you could um, advertise, you know, language teaching skills. You could, there's all sorts of things you can do to sort of appeal to that demographic, you know. Uh, I'm afraid to tell you this, but I, I just, if I was 35 in the current situation, man, it's, it's tough. It's tough. History is going to be hard. It's going to be very hard there. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'd like to give you good news, but it's just not like that. It's just not like that. Um, if possible, I'd like to spend at least one year living in Bangkok once COVID is over. Yep. Yep. I understand the sentiment. I really do. But I don't know if that's a good thing at the moment. I don't think that's the thing I'd be doing. I'm sorry, okay? This COVID thing, it's a disaster, okay? It's an absolute disaster. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry to say that to you there. If you're bitten by the Asian fever, you know, I, I got to be honest with you, I'd possibly try and find someone in America. That's what I would do. Don't make the stupid mistake of marrying them, of course, because they will fleece you. But um, see if you can have some adult fun. That sort of arrangement might be the best alternative. But i, I got to be honest with you. I'm sorry to be doom and gloomy today. But, yeah, I don't think it's going to be easy for them to open the borders. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't write the script. You can blame the Chinese for it. So, um, yeah, that's kind of my my advice so yeah there you go aaron thank you so much love your collection so happy you got the i mean i was just about to suggest tudor black bay pepsi gmt you already did it man well done next piece reverso get a reverso enjoy life you're only young ones 35 what a great age i'm archie luxury tell me what you think like subscribe tell your friends remember i can't survive on google ads I desperately need these paid reviews to keep me full time on YouTube. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't done a paid review, 50 US dollars, I'll review your collection. I'll give you some advice. I'll make this custom video for you and you can share it with all your friends. I'm Paul Pluter. Please get a video request in now. Hi guys, Archie Luxury, and who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for quality pre-owned wristwatches? David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best, the greatest pre-owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW. Hey guys, Archie Luxury. Who do I recommend for watches in Brisbane and Sydney? Vintage Watch Co. That's correct. Vintage Watch Co. in Brisbane Arcade in Brisbane and the Strand Arcade in Sydney. Vintage Watch Co. Brisbane and Sydney. Ronnie, I've known him since the late 90s. Ronnie is a top bloke. Luke is a great guy. Vintage Watch Co. That is who I recommend in Australia. Check out Vintage Watch Co. and the guys' amazing range of watches. They also do service and repairs. Vintage Watch Co. That is where the pontiff goes. You know, some of my paddocks came from Vintage Watch Co. That's right, guys. Vintage Watch Co.